Howdy folks, and welcome to, well, not really an episode of Mingles with Jingles. This is, this is basically the YouTube content creator's equivalent of just not feeling like it and calling in work to pretend that they're sick. I had a pretty rough weekend, and I really just want to have an early night. So, no episode of Mingles with Jingles today, but I thought I'd just make a quick video before crawling into my scratcher and getting a good night's sleep just to basically go over the the big news of the week and explain why you're not getting a proper episode of Mingles with Jingles and the big news of the week, at least as far as I'm concerned. Well, for those of you who follow me on social media, you're probably aware that bad things come in threes. First, I lost my internet connection last week, and then on the same day, uh, my phone network went down, and then right at the end of the week, I lost my monitor. Well, I didn't lose it. I know exactly where it is. It just stopped working. It was a 1080p monitor that's actually older than my computer, and it was a good monitor, and it served me well. Um, but it finally gave up the ghost, and I had to get a new one. And that is the reason why you're currently watching glorious 4K video. At least, you know, those of you who have monitors that can display 4K video are watching glorious 4K video. I did, at first, of course, have to check that my graphics card was capable of, uh, of rendering, games in 4K. I have a GTX 1080. Eh, it's a couple of years old, but it can get the job done. And once I was happy that my graphics card could handle it, I got myself a, a, a decent 4K monitor from Samsung. I certainly didn't spend a lot of money on it. I just bought a new video camera and I'm broke. <laughs> now I'm even more broke. Uh, but I spent a couple of hundred quid and I've gotten a very nice, I can't even remember what model it is, but it's a decent Samsung 4K monitor. Which means now I can enjoy 4K gaming. And holy shit. Wow. All these years I've been gaming in 1080p. And there's nothing wrong with gaming in 1080p. Uh, the GTX 1080 can absolutely produce stunning results in 1080p. But it can produce some pretty impressive results in 4K as well. The amount of detail that's actually in the games I play that I wasn't aware of until I started playing in 4K. Seriously, I'm, I'm really sorry for anybody who does not have a 4K monitor <laughs> um, and is watching this scale down to 1080p on YouTube. Seriously, you don't know what you're missing. I could not believe the difference when I flashed up World of Warships for the first time in 4K. I mean, I had to make some compromises. The GTX 1080 is a good card, uh, but it's getting on a bit. Uh, and by default, in 1080p, I was playing with all the graphical settings maxed out, and it looked good. But it's not quite capable of running World of Warships at 4K with all of the graphical settings maxed out. Well, well, it is, but the frame rates tanked down to 30 frames per second or less, and it just didn't feel right. So I lowered the World of Warships graphical settings down from, oh my god, <laughs> to merely very high. <laughs> <laughs> and the old GTX 1080 was capable of uh, rendering the game in 4K at 60 frames per second, uh, which is what you're looking at now. Assuming, of course, that you're actually capable of viewing 4K video on YouTube. Otherwise, this is probably just going to look the same as the regular 1080p that you see every time I do a World of Warships upload. But the good news is that now I'm capable of gaming, editing and uploading in 4K. So for those of you who have the equipment to take advantage of that, um, most, if not all, of my future videos are going to be 4K uploads. To everybody else, you simply watch it in 1080p or 720p or whatever it is that you've been watching it in, in the past. It won't make any difference. But for those of you who are capable of appreciating the difference, you're going to be able to appreciate the difference. There is a downside to all of this, however. You see, while I'm actually editing the video, in the editing suite. Um, the preview window of the video that I'm currently editing is now in such high resolution that I can clearly see exactly which ship or tank is which ship or tank. Why is that, why is that bad, Jingles? Well, what that means is that now, if I misidentify a ship or a tank, <laughs> I can't blame it on the editing software's shitty resolution. <laughs> I'm going to have to come up with another excuse. So there you go. That's your homework for the week. 
I want you guys to come up with a convincing excuse for why Jingles would still consistently get the names of ships and tanks and aircraft wrong. Um, <laughs> when he no longer can blame his editing software on it. Let's see what you come up with in the comments. There is one bit of gaming news that I did want to touch on um, before I shut this down and have myself an early night. The three-way battle between Epic, Apple and Google, which I touched on in last week's episode of Mingles with Jingles, but there have been further developments this week. And for those of you who don't know what's going on, Epic don't want to pay Apple or Google their cut for selling their games on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. In a nutshell, every time you make a transaction in a game that you got through the App Store, Apple gets 30%. And it's the same for any games that you got through the Play Store. Google gets 30%. Now, whether or not you believe that that 30% cut is too much, whether or not you believe that Apple and Google are being too greedy, isn't really the issue. I mean, for the record, I do believe that they're being too greedy. I believe that both Apple and Google are scumbags. But Epic's a scumbag too. The difference is, Epic's a hypocritical scumbag. And here's why. I firmly believe... And I can't prove this, of course, but when I explain why I believe this, maybe you'll agree. I firmly believe that Epic engineered this whole thing right from the start. They knew, in advance, that if they were to put Fortnite on the App Store or the Play Store, Apple and Google, respectively, were going to take a 30% cut of all microtransactions. They knew this because they asked Apple and Google if they could get away with not paying that 30% cut. Apple and Google both told them, no, you're not a special snowflake, we'll take the same cut from microtransactions in your games on our stores as we take from everybody else. Epic agreed to this because it signed the contract. Epic then immediately hotfixed Fortnite to bypass the Apple and Google payment process so that Apple and Google did not get their 30% cut. And all Fortnite microtransactions on those two platforms after this hotfix went straight into Epic's pockets. Epic clearly knew that both Apple and Google were going to notice this. And they did notice this. And so they both kicked Fortnite off the Apple and Play Store respectively. Because those were the terms of the contract. Which Epic knowingly and willfully violated. Immediately and I mean immediately, like the next day, almost as if they'd planned this whole thing out in advance, Epic unleashed a social media campaign, hashtag free Fortnite, a pre-rendered video castigating Apple, a video which, unless they've got the world's best graphics designers and the entire world's computer processing power, probably took them more than 24 hours to prepare and release, and filed lawsuits against both Apple and Google, a social media campaign and a lawsuit trying to position themselves as the champions of consumer rights. <laughs> They're doing all of this for you, the gamer in the street. They're not doing it so that they don't have to pay a 30% cut of all microtransactions to Apple and Google. No, no, no. That's, I'm sure that's perfectly incidental, which is what makes it all the more hypocritical when you read the terms of their lawsuit where they claim, very generously of them I have to say, that they're not actually seeking financial compensation from either Google or Apple. They take great pains to stress that Epic is not seeking punitive damages against either Apple or Google. They just want to keep all of the money. <laughs> and they want to keep all of the money for you, the little guy. Seriously, the hypocrisy just, it, it's, it's unbelievable. So they're all scumbags here. I mean, it's, there are no good guys. It's okay to hate all of them. But Epic seriously underestimated just how evil Apple can be because Apple's response has been nothing short of, well, Epic. You see, Apple haven't just removed Fortnite from the App Store. They've gone one step further. They've terminated Epic's access to the App Store, which Apple are perfectly within their rights to do. It was all in the terms of the contract that Epic signed with Apple. 
you know, the contract that Epic didn't really pay any attention to, they just signed it because they knew they were going to violate its terms anyway, so that they could engineer this whole crisis and set themselves up as the champions of the little guy going up against Big Bad Apple and Big Bad Google. But Apple have basically just gone for the jugular vein here. Because if you revoke Epic's access to Apple's developer tools, which they have done, any developer using the Unreal Engine won't be able to patch security flaws or fix bugs once this access is revoked. Epic are now screaming blue murder. I mean, I, I don't think Epic understood just how far Apple was prepared to go. They're basically now holding the Unreal Engine hostage. And it seems they're perfectly within their rights to do so. Apple said, Epic's agreements with Apple expressly spell out that if an app developer violates the rules of the App Store or the license for development tools, both of which apply and are enforced equally to all developers, large and small, Apple will stop working with that developer. Developers who work to deceive Apple, as Epic has done here, are terminated. So when Epic willfully and knowingly breached its agreements by secretly installing a hotfix into its app to bypass Apple's payment system and app review process, it knew full well what would happen, and in doing so, has knowingly and purposefully created the harm to game players and developers, it now asks the court to step in and remedy. Apple also noted that temporary restraining orders exist to remedy irreparable harm, not easily repairable self-inflicted wounds. Referring here to the restraining order that Epic is trying to hit Apple with. Adding that Epic could have avoided suffering any damage at all, if it had filed its lawsuit without breaching its agreements. All of that alleged injury for which Epic improperly seeks emergency relief could disappear tomorrow if Epic cured its breach. Apple has offered Epic the opportunity to cure, to go back to the status quo before Epic installed its hotfix that turned into its hot mess, and to be welcomed back into the App Store. All of this can happen without any intervention of the court or expenditure of judicial resources, and Epic would be free to pursue its primary lawsuit. But Epic does not want to remedy the harm that it contends requires immediate relief, because it has a different goal in mind. It wants the court to allow it to free ride on Apple's innovation, intellectual property, and user trust. And so in the meantime, Apple is not only holding Fortnite hostage, it's also holding the entire Unreal Engine hostage. And it's apparently perfectly within its rights to do so, all contained within the terms of the contract that Epic signed with Apple, when it clearly knew it was going to violate the contract in the first place, so it could engineer this whole mess and take Apple and Google to court. What Epic failed to take into account, however, is just how unbelievably evil Apple is. <laughs> and the depths to which Apple would go in order to teach Epic a lesson. And I think this is fantastic. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. They're all bad guys. I mean, Google's sitting on the sidelines hoping nobody notices them. <laughs> like, it's got nothing to do with us. <laughs> I, I, just, I just think this is great. <laughs> Who needs TV? <laughs> when you've got drama like this. Anyway, that's basically it. I thought I'd just keep you all up to date. I've got my new 4K monitor. Woo, 4K gaming. Woo, 4K uploads. Yay. Uh, for those of you who can appreciate the difference, and also uh, continuing developments in the massive three-way slugfest, the battle of the shitheads between Apple, Epic, and Google. The battle that nobody really cares who wins, because they're all basically just as bad as each other. And on that bombshell, that's it for this almost episode of Miggles with Jingles. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you've all had a good weekend, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.